Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel, Drawing with Michael, Michael Claire to Arts. So today we're going to be doing a creature in Photoshop, drawing a creature in Photoshop. You're going to follow along as I start out drawing simple shapes and moving into line refinement, gesture, kind of the items that I think about whenever I create a creature um, in the digital environment. And this, of course, also lends itself to drawing traditionally. I don't do a lot of difference whenever I draw um, in the computer uh, as I do traditionally. Now, obviously, digital affords me to go back and control Z and, and layers and stuff like that, but the mentality is the same. You know, I use these tools as exactly what they're intended. They're just tools. And, you know, I always fall back to the basics, which is basic shapes, weight, distribution, form, line, um, gesture and story and all those things, uh, you know, put together, you know, kind of uh, create a feeling, you know, what's right whenever you're working in the context of uh, character creation. So I'm going to be working in Photoshop today, going to be using some different brushes, some different textures, and uh, we're just going to be having some fun. Sorry, it's been a hot minute since I've done a video, but I was really sick last week, had the flu, and I'm still kind of getting over some uh, a little bit of the cough, so my apologies if I clear my throat here and there, but let's get started. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop. I've created my document, 300 uh, DPI. I believe it's 15 inches wide by 12 inches high. Let's go ahead and check the canvas size. All right, so Photoshop. Man, it looks confusing here, doesn't it? <laughs> I always, uh, whenever I'm teaching Photoshop, I always tell people, I say, you know, Photoshop's one of those great programs that can do a lot of things, but it also, you know, it has a, a very high learning curve, and that in and of itself has the potential to really kind of bum you out, and especially whenever you're first learning and you want some successes under your belt, and unfortunately, um, you know, Photoshop really doesn't work that way. It's, it's, it, it, it doesn't apologize for anything, meaning, you know, it basically, you got to know what you're doing or else you're going to get frustrated and you're going to end up messing things up and, and, you know, sooner than later, you're going to realize, man, I hate Photoshop. It's a confused, uh, confusing, bloated piece of software that, you know, I, I only end up having a bunch of issues with and, you know, there's a lot of truth to that, um, unfortunately. But uh, whenever you do have at least a, a small smattering and inkling of what you're doing in here, Photoshop is a wonderful program that um, literally is the industry standard for, um, you know, for illustration and photo correction. Um, and it's a really powerful tool. And if you think about it as a tool, I mean, whenever you first started, doing stuff you I mean first started using a pencil you didn't know how to use a pencil so you had to practice 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 you know and, and sometimes every single day you had to practice and you know the same thing happens um, you know with Photoshop I definitely think that Photoshop is one of those again one of those programs that you can use uh, so many different ways um, and still have success no matter how uh, you know, you decide to utilize this program. I use it primarily as a painting program. I do uh, a lot of photography as well. Um, but, you know, I, I definitely think that drawing, <clears throat> at least for me, drawing is what I utilize it most for. Okay, so what am I doing? I'm basically mapping out a composition right now. Um, the creature is going to be sort of animalistic. See, he's got his arm right here. <clears throat> and he's holding a uh, maybe a staff or something right here, and he's got his other hand. You know, here's the other 
elbow right here. You can't see because it's behind the head. Um, please bear with me. Uh, I've I've had a very rough, probably week, week and a half, two weeks, and and still dealing with that sickness, man. I tell you what. You know, I, I thought I was pretty much good to go and healed, and, 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 you know, I speak that over my body, you know, healing, healing, healing. You know, you don't want to ever speak anything because your words have a lot of power. And I'm not, you know, being goofy or anything like that. It's, you know, your brain hears that a lot of times it latches onto things, and, you know, suddenly, you know, after you keep telling yourself you feel sick, you feel sick, you feel sick, suddenly you do feel sick. It's a lot of mental, it does, it's a very strong mental game, but... You know, I have felt a little bit under the weather here and there, but man, last week was rough. It was rough. <clears throat> okay, so like I said, I'm mapping out my illustration uh, on the composition. I'm doing sort of a traditional pyramid composition. You can see as I just drew the pyramid in here. A lot of you guys have also asked about this brush right here. The sketch drawing brush, it is my fave. Um, this particular brush, I've modified it um, to suit me. The original brush can be downloaded from CreatureArtTeacher.com and I believe it is the free brush you get whenever you sign up for the newsletter. Um, I've modified this one to suit me and you know I've probably modified it you know maybe 30 times just because you know I like having uh, custom brushes to fit me. I, it's no brush that really it's not like the Ring of Power, no brush to rule them all. But this one's pretty good. It's got nice pressure curve to it. And it, uh, you know, it's got nice texture to it. And I've gone in and adjusted the pressure curve and I've adjusted the texture somewhat and the shape. And it fits me um, pretty good. And that's another thing that you can do in Photoshop is manipulate the brushes to fit you. You know, how you work. Um, You know what your preferences are uh, you know and also for the particular job at hand you know it's important that you get with the right tool so that's what this is creature art teacher I get a lot of people asking for that brush I don't want to provide it <clears throat> per se because I'm not the one that created the brush even though I've manipulated it to the point where it really doesn't recognize it really doesn't match the brush that is provided from them it just doesn't feel right for me to go ahead and provide that brush without you know you guys going and, and signing up for that newsletter um, over there at creatureartteacher.com and that of course is the art of Aaron Blaze he does have a channel um, look up creature art teacher and he's a really great illustrator teacher um, he sells tutorials just a, a really good all-around artist uh, in general and uh, you know, definitely go on and give the man, um, <clears throat> give the man some love. Okay, so he's kind of standing on something, on a rock, but I haven't mapped out the gesture here. It's not quite working the way I want it to. And he's kind of a, an elephant character, elephant, rhinoceros large hippopotamus, something along those lines. I haven't determined yet. Or maybe he's a, uh, maybe he's a type of dinosaur or something. I don't know. Just kind of having fun with him right now. Having fun. Isn't that what we're supposed to be doing? And it does look like a mess, but at, every time I zoom out, I get a little bit better understanding of exactly what I'm doing here. All right, so let's go ahead and put his eyes up here. Okay. A lot of times you get what are called um, those key items in that really establish. There we go. See, you just put that eye in there and suddenly it it jumps off the canvas so much more than it would if you didn't have the eye in there. Okay. Let's have that ear. Let that ear come down a little bit because he's kind of ticked. He's like, rawr. That's the technical term, rawr. Okay. Maybe he's got a little bit of a nick out of his ear. Okay. This large 
bulbous area right here that comes around the end to make it a little bit bigger. There we go. <clears throat> okay. Now I start thinking about a little bit more about anatomy, whereas before I was thinking about gesture and weight. You know, gesture and weight being, uh, gesture and weight, okay, so the gesture basically being the, you know, that expression, that moment, that quick read, it's, you know, in terms of silhouette, how I want it to read, you know, I want to be able to see all of the arm parts here, so if I were to break it down, you know, into very simple, let's go ahead and have that arm comes back. wrapping around he's kind of ripping that right there even though you can't see his arm here it's amazing whenever you don't make a video for quite a bit of time you know and you don't post the algorithm treats your channel in such a way that it's like oh he's not posting right now so we're gonna go ahead and put him on hiatus which is not true at all you know, I'm still making content, I'm still doing things. But if you don't post every day, that reward uh, is not there. You know, the reward being, you know, we're going to put you into the algorithm of the search engine and people searching for drawing and keywords, your videos are going to come up. Um, and if you don't post every day, it, it doesn't it doesn't happen as frequent. You know, I've definitely noticed uh, that. Uh, as a recent, you know, okay. So this is kind of a ball, I want that to be a ball. Very simple language. Okay, kind of like mace. Or a, not a flail, flail has balls at the end. Mace is like a, uh, like a shillelagh or a, or a stick. The ball at the end. Okay. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back. So this arm is kind of going back from us. And then I've got this large bulbous mass, which is his belly. I'm going to go ahead and draw that structure line here. Because then I can get the center of his chest. Right? Let's get these wrinkles because he's got this arm coming here. Jowl. <clears throat> and another thing about Photoshop is the fact that it's got some really robust modification tools that you can utilize. Like I can already tell you the head's down too far. So I'm going to go ahead and transform. And right then I just did Command T. Okay, so then I take my lasso tool, go ahead and cut out his head. Copy, delete, and paste. It creates a new layer over here on the right-hand side. Now I'm going to go ahead and position this up a little bit further up here. I'm going to angle it. I'm going to have this come up like that. Okay. All right. So we'll go ahead and merge those two. And now I can kind of fill in the blanks. He's got that large bolus mass, an arm coming around. Here's his elbow. There we go. Okay, here's the lower part of his pectoral muscles that come around. Good. And you've got that other arm that is partially hidden and now you can have that bicep that comes around. Don't be afraid to change. Don't be afraid to change your drawing as you progress through. You know, a lot of times I'll start a drawing and the gesture won't be working out correctly um, and the posture is not right. And I just, you know, so I'm, I'm currently having him kind of go forward. So now I want this. I need to have that down a little bit further. Okay, 
here, here. If you ever look at hippopotamuses, they are absolutely beautiful creatures. And then, of course, one of the things that you don't realize is the fact they're the most dangerous animal in Africa. They kill more people per capita per year than any other animals, um, from lions and tigers to snakes. They are brutal. Okay, so I wanted him to hold something <clears throat> here, but I'm kind of struggling. So let's have that here. Maybe he's got a mechanical hand. I don't know. I don't know. All right. So now let's think about how I'm going to resolve this area right here. Whoops. I accidentally switched over. I've got a quick key on my pen um, that I accidentally will hit sometimes. And it switches it over to the eraser. So I'll be working and then boom, eraser. I'm like, ah, no, stop. Okay, so let's <clears throat> have that. Muscle here, here, I'm gonna have that arm come around. I want that finger, another, come here. And as you see, it's very rough right now. I mean, so rough, but you get, you know, you get the understanding of exactly what's going on, you know, very rudimentary some plants and stuff like that here. <clears throat> okay, so let's, whoops. Yeah, I got some rocks that kind of lead your eye. <laughs> not too happy with the shape of that head. I still think it's a little bit off. So again, because I can, let's go ahead and cut this head out again. Cut, paste, transform. Yeah, see I moved it up twice. Okay. that big trapezius muscle here and then he's got this huge kind of a hulking neck mass that protrudes right he's got that okay here's that kind of curves around there we go He's got this loin cloth that kind of comes down. I haven't decided if I'm going to give him some armor yet or not. Okay, so this is kind of that defining moment <clears throat> when I'm like, eh, do I go ahead and progress? Let me move over here. No, I don't want that. If I want to progress, is this a drawing that really didn't, is something that I want to continue with? Obviously, you know, I want to go ahead and, and progress because I want you guys to see that that uh, that process. So let's go ahead. Okay, so I've messed up that hand pretty bad. Curve around. I have to, I have to decide anthropomorphic versus um, animal accuracy. So Anthropomorphic, you're, you're injecting human qualities and human characteristics into the animal. Right now, <clears throat> I'm kind of on that fence when it comes to the hands. Um, I like having humanistic hands because it helps. And this here is really bothering me. It really helps in 
in uh, you know definition in the gesture and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and rhinos, not rhinos, but um, hippos have these cute little little ears, right? Let's have that other one kind of come around. <coughs> There we go. Okay, so that muscle right here is kind of haunched up somewhat. Okay, let's go ahead and have a little fun here in terms of the skeletal structure underneath. Okay, this needs to come out further. Okay, these teeth are. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and choke back that underdrawing. I'm going to add a layer over here on the right-hand side. Okay, first of all, we need to save. I don't think I've saved yet. I have not. Let's just say hippo fun. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and start refining my sketch. Um, I like the gesture. I like the placement of stuff. I'm not so sure about this right here, what's going on there. Um, and then in terms of the, uh, the humanistic qualities that I've injected, obviously I've given some, you know, kind of a human body, very bulbous, but also, I don't know, maybe, <clears throat> maybe if I go ahead and I don't know what I'm doing here. See if I go ahead and do this, it's gonna it's gonna you know kind of give him that one, two, three. He's got these claws that come out maybe. third one kind of comes at me just a little bit. Right. I don't know. You know how you get to that point where you're like, ah, I just, I don't know if I want to do that type of a hand. Because then you have to think about the knuckle and how yeah, I'm just, I'm not feeling that. Kind of looks like he's got a, something wooden on there that's not really working for me. Okay. So I guess we'll continue with uh, humanistic hands, human hands. So let's go ahead and refine and define this eye a little bit better. Okay. That brow. All right. That brow kind of comes around. He's got some fur that comes off of there. Comes around. Yeah. Let's go ahead and draw in the Pupil virus. All right, so then he's got this long. Maybe he's. Bone structure underneath. Good. Skin folds coming up. That skin fold comes up right here. Oh, just forgot to do a little cutout on his ear. There we go. Okay, that's a little bit better. So now we'll come down, connect these edge of his head. Let's get his jowl. Here and it continues forth. You got these wrinkles. Okay. 
Okay, and then the eye socket, because the eyeball is up here. Pardon me. He's got his mouth here, and then he's got this eye socket right here. There's his nostril. The nostrils on the other side. Oh, that little construction line there helps you out. Here's the under part of his lip. All right. So I've got a huge project, as always, looking for a pretty illustrious client. I'm doing classic monster toys, uh, which is awesome. So your Universal Studios. Um, characters, you know, from 1920s, really going to enjoy that. I love doing creatures in general, but those just really have a uh, kind of a special place in my brain. I love doing classic and, and you know, interpreting old for kind of a new look. <clears throat> you can't really stray too far from those because those are known as legacy properties. And legacy properties, they want to keep a look to them, but also they like having a new way of doing things. So it's, I've always had a, a decent strength um, and the ability to take something a little bit older, <clears throat> kind of making it a little bit newer, but really keeping that legacy uh, vision. Um, because you you know again you can't you can't stray too far from the original character design you know at least not not for what they want to do you know I mean if you're coming up with something completely new and the direction is yes you you definitely come up with something completely different then yeah that's fine, but that wasn't the direction. They wanted to keep it somewhat traditional. Okay, so what I'm doing right now, again, I'm just refining, refining and defining, right? Refining, defining. I'm going back, you can see I'm trying to keep a nice action to it. And you see all this, these lines right here because the skin is being pulled, right? That mouth is open, um, you know, up and down. So you're going to have some stress and strain in these areas. Um, you know, I, I think drawing skin is one of those lifelong endeavors. It's not easy to do. <clears throat> but once you understand that it's elastic and it pulls and pushes and, and forms, then you can really have a lot of fun with it. I think at least. So let's go ahead and do this. Okay. All right. And you've got this large bulbous, because he's kind of, in this area right here, he's leaning a little bit. So you're going to get this area that gets pushed out right here. Okay, this area right here, and then he's got a, that huge pectoral muscle. <clears throat> and then he's got this huge fat mass. But it's not really a fat mass, it's like muscle plus fat. You know, and then you've got, here's the muscle group right here, comes out. And then the bicep right here that comes around. Just still defining these areas and making sure I try and keep a semblance of anatomy correction. Um, continually looking at the drawing, zooming out, 
making sure that I, I don't, you know, end up getting perspective wrong. There we go. Sorry, that's <clears throat> my chair was making some noise there. Okay. Eye right, comes around. Let's do this. Good. It's a little bit deeper here. Okay. Wrinkles, let me make this come around. All right. Yup. All right. So let's go ahead and have this come around just to get a little bit better understanding of us. Let's increase this. My belly comes around here. It drips way down. Good. Okay. Now I need to think. Okay. So he's got his fat here and then it kind of rolls over just a little bit. Now I'm going to define that knee a little bit better. Good. Okay. Comes around like that. One, two, three, and sometimes that helps me to do that. Three, probably going to edit that out. Nobody wants to hear somebody sneeze. Two, three. Okay. Here, let's have this come around. Yeah, here we go. So now what I'm going to do, so I'm just going to go back, he's got this other. There we go. Okay. That third one. Kind of coming towards me just a little bit. Here we go. It's got these huge claws. Rawr. That's the technical term for it. Rawr. <clears throat> okay. Okay. I'm gonna like having the it comes up. There's that big one right there. And there's that third one kind of coming towards me just a little bit. So I don't want him to have four. I want him to have three. So let's have him have three. Okay, so here. Here, two, three, one, 
two, three. And you see, it's still simple. Everything is really simplified. And I'm not getting into the details just yet. You know, I, I think that as we progress as artists, we, we really determine when that time is to quote unquote bring bring the detail, bring the theory, right? And the time is not yet. <laughs> you know, it's not quite there yet. Let's have that come down a little bit. Oops. Man, Ugh, you haven't been drawing and suddenly get a pain right in the center of your back? Eek, that's painful. And you're like, what? Where did that come from? It's because you're old, dude. No. Okay, it really helps a lot if you do a lot of anatomy, and I don't. So I'm constantly having to refer back to reference in terms of um, accuracy. I mean, I've got a rudimentary knowledge of anatomy. I'm not anywhere near what I used to be. You know, back in the day, I'd be able to, you know, <clears throat> you know, talk about the muscles and 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 definitely have that ability and have that knowledge inside of you is very valuable when you divine, you know, design characters and whatnot. Okay. Good, good. I think we're good. So let's go ahead and get this hand wrapped up here. Come around. Center would come here. Here's that other one right there. Here, there's that other one. Right there. I think this is a little bit long and a little bit too small. So let's go ahead and do this. Make it a little bit bigger. We're going to turn it in just slightly. Yeah, I think that's going to be okay for now. For now, again, we're still finding, defining, trying to determine what is the best. Okay. Still here, here. Okay, we got some boots. We little boots. There's nothing we little about this guy. Okay. All right. Let's give him a little bit more girth underneath here. Always a fun word to say. Girth. Okay, a little bit more of a muscle mass on his arm. Okay. Comes up here, here. See, just by nature of having, you know, the way that I draw, trying to simplify, the simplification process actually will create a style. And then, you know, once you get your initial sketch down, if you're, you know, wanting to get a specific design cue or to stop cue, then you go in and, and you can modify as needed. I will probably <clears throat> go back in and 
change things quite a bit here because I do want to give him some clothes. You know, I don't know what I'm going to do yet. I have to look. I have to find some reference and kind of pull from that area. What I'm doing now is just going back and, and kind of defining where some of those um, you know, bone structures are. Here's his elbow right here. It comes around like that. It's bicep. Kind of pulls. You don't want to have too big of a, a bulbous bicep because that arm is being elongated here. So I've got more or less a straight line here and then I've got a curve right here. So that in and of itself, you have opposing, you know, opposing curves that help. The overall design of the piece. I messed up that bicep a little bit. Or not bicep, the pectoral muscle. Okay. So what's great about doing creatures is the fact that I have kind of carte blanche. That means I have the ultimate decision of exactly what I can put in and what I you know can leave out. I know that that uh, hippopotamuses don't have horns, but I decide, you know, I want to give him a horn, I can give him a horn, I can give him a helmet, I can give him, you know, whatever I want to do, <clears throat> and that's what's really cool about doing creatures. Um, in general, if I want to mash, I do a mashup, I've, I've done mashups on this channel before, and, you know, having fun with it, and that's, again, I, I'm just trying to have some fun today, right? I've had some challenges and, and I'm trying to get back on the horse, trying to get my arm moving. You know, I did work <clears throat> periodically through my um, my sickness and unfortunately that probably wasn't the best decision. <laughs> okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and flip horizontal it. And what that does is that will show in blatant, I mean, this has issues. His, his gesture isn't as good as I would have liked. I mean, this is major. What? Okay, so let's go ahead and cut this out. Copy, paste. Let's do a warp. There we go. Much better. <laughs> it is kind of funny whenever you flip it because your 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 brain sees one thing. Yeah, this arm right here is also too small. <clears throat> you can see it gets really big right here, and then it, what happens here? So let's go ahead and we're gonna cut this out. No, 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 no. Okay. Copy paste transform. Let's do warp. Let's do this. Pull it up to find that silhouette a little bit better. Silhouette being the outline, you know, of the creature. So, well, that's pretty good. This this area right here, I'm not gelling either. Something's going on there. So, let's go ahead and cut that out. Copy, paste. Let's put that in just a little bit. Good. Kind of balance him up a little bit better overall. Make him a little bit bigger. I think he needs to be a little bit bigger because it's coming toward us. Okay, so that's pretty good. E. And then of course, boom, get him back and suddenly everything is right, right with the world, right? So now we'll connect this. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay. Not bad. All right, so what I'm gonna do um, is I'm just gonna put you guys on time-lapse for a while. We're gonna draw, we're gonna have some fun. 
and um, you know, just right now, I'm not I'm not going in and doing anything in particular. I've just got my simple brush here. I can turn taper off. I've got pressure on, but here, let's add a layer. You know, even at this early stage, you know, I can go in and start putting in some of those shadow elements that will help define him, you know, very quickly. Define him a little bit better. That cast shadow right here. You know, he's got shadow in his hand. Get some of this right here, right there. Right there. Okay. So you can understand, you know, as I progress through, I'll be making some adjustments here and there. Shadow a little bit. Okay, so then I've got that on a separate layer, so I can pull that back just a little bit. Again, I'm liking how the silhouette is, and I'm thinking, you know, overall he's he's working out pretty good. So, again, putting you guys on time lapse. Enjoy the process.
stop, 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 stop,
Okay, so here's where we are currently. I placed in my color flats um, here in Photoshop, and what I typically will do now is I'll go ahead and um, I'll add a layer on top of everything. And you know, in terms of layer management, I can go ahead and group all of these if I want. I can just put working, <clears throat> just to make life simple. Um, but here, let me see what I did here. Okay. So what I'm going to do, this is a little trick that you can utilize as you go forward in Photoshop. So I just want him, because I'm just going to put some shadows on him. I'm selecting... Okay, so I can see the marching ants, the little marching ants right there. I'm going to go ahead and create a layer. <clears throat> I'm going to edit, fill, white. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and place this over. This will be multiply, which will make it disappear. And I'll create a layer mask on top. And I'll make that multiply, but I'm actually going to have it as my shadow layer. So my shadow layer is going to be a, kind of a cool purple. <clears throat> um, let's go ahead and grab my brush here to make sure everything's copacetic, which it is. And since I have this on a layer mask over here on layer 16, it's referencing layer 17. So anything that I draw on layer 16 will reference 17 and it won't go outside of the confines of the color. And since I've got this as a color fill over here on the right hand side, we'll go ahead and inverse this. You see it's black. So basically anytime I paint on 16, it's going to reference, let's do this just for giggles. It's going to reference that layer below. Okay. So let's go ahead and adjust my brush. I don't want taper on there because I want a nice broad stroke. And the reason why I'm using this brush, not only does it have great pressure curve to it, it also has a texture. And I want to put a little bit of texture in there, just a little bit. I like how the texture interacts um, with you know what I'm doing and the character of the drawing. Give it that kind of illustrative quality. I don't really want to paint it per se. Paint, you know, being the liquid. I equated that liquid, you know, sheen feel realistic. And that's not what this is. This is just supposed to be a fun drawing for you guys to have fun with. Right now I've got my pressure. Now I can press really hard. That's pressing really hard. With my pressure curve, I've got this little indicator up here. Um, where's it at? Let's go to the layer brush settings. <clears throat> Interesting. Texture and tool brush. Yeah, so I've got that on. That would be pressure sensitivity. And this would be flow. So I can do this and jack that down to about 50%. And that gives me a nice feel whenever I start to put in this texture shadow. And with these new, you know, the not new, they've been around for a while, the tablets that are in the marketplace now, a lot of them have 8,000 levels of pressure sensitivity. And, you know, we always equate more levels of pressure with a better tablet. Yeah, I've got I've got 55,000 levels of pressure sensitivity. Therefore, my tablet is better than yours. You know, I did 
a lot of the artwork that I had in my archive with, let's go ahead and turn taper on, with brushes, or I'm sorry, with tablets that only had, you know, 256 levels of pressure sensitivity, then they went to 480, then it went to 1080, then it went to 2200, 2400, then it went to 4400, and now it's 8600 and something. So, you know, you can't equate a great drawing experience to the amount of pressure levels that your, your tablet uh, has. It's not a bragging right. It is just an added feature that, you know, a lot of times, even certain brushes don't even take advantage uh, of that. And two, you won't even notice that level of pressure sensitivity whenever you're drawing really small. Um, most of the time, that really comes in whenever you're drawing really large. Uh, <clears throat> you'll notice a smoothness um, in your drawing experience you know, from, let's say, 4,000 levels of pressure sensitivity to 8,000 levels. It's double the pressure sensitivity, but it, it just equates to just a smidge more smoothness, right? So what I'm doing now is I'm just putting in not, I don't call them global. These are skin shadows, areas of skin, you know, that overlay and overlap, and also some of the fabric shadows that uh, you know on this this helmet area that I want because I know it curves in right here and I'll just have a simple shadow on that right Let's just go ahead and do this we can put that in there and as I layer on top of it it gets darker and darker this particular action what I'm doing right now can take a while you know, if I'm sitting here and I'm drawing and I'm having some fun and I'm just enjoying the day, you know, and I put some tunes on and, you know, this particular, um, this particular action that I'm doing, putting in the shadows can take, you know, can take an hour, can take two hours. It just depends on how much I want to invest in this. You know, I, I, like I said before, I mentor students and, and, and I'm always open to helping people. And one of the things that I always tell students, especially ones that are in their first year, second year, third year, <clears throat> and, and, you know, some of the ones uh, coming out, you know, I say, art isn't like other jobs. Drawing, you know, for a living isn't like other jobs because other jobs, such as a service job, or something like that. Maybe you're part of a team and you're, you know, if you don't do as much on the line, the assembly line, then obviously it's going to affect the others and, and they can step it up and they can, you know, pick up the work, the workload. If you're in the art field and you're doing this for a living, then you're going to be very solitary. You know, you're going to be by yourself. You're going to be in a studio. You're going to be in front of a computer. And even if you're, you know, even if you are in a studio, you're still by, technically, you're still kind of by yourself. Maybe you're in an office. Maybe, you know, you're in a studio environment. Maybe you're at a desk in a cubicle. You know, wherever you are, you're still sort of, quote, unquote, by yourself. You're doing things, um, you know, you're drawing, you've got your headphones on, and it's hard. I'll be frank with you. You know, there have been times when I've questioned if this is the right career path for me. You know, I've been doing this a long time. And, you know, there's pluses and minuses. And, and you know, being alone is hard. <laughs> you know, it's not a complaint. It's not a jab. It's not a jive. It's just a reality that as an artist, you have to... Face now, some artists, you know, that got that old stereotype of the artist. You know, they don't like people. <clears throat> they don't like being around people. Therefore, they you know excel. They can manage. They self manage themselves, and and you know that that sort of thing. But some artists are people. People, you know, 
I'm a people person. I like being around people. I like making people laugh. I, I enjoy, you know, that camaraderie. I enjoy teamwork. I enjoy being around people. So whenever I'm left to myself, you know, it gets a little lonely. You know, a little lonely here and there. And it can be challenging, especially after you've been drawing for 15 hours and, you know, you, you basically have been alone uh, in an environment for that long and it's, whew, it can be hard. Okay, so what am I doing? Like I said before, I am going in on the shadow layer. Let's get rid of this. And I'm placing in some of these quote unquote texture, you know, texture shadows that uh, that kind of help sell this as a hand-drawn illustration. Some of the illustrations I've seen out there are absolutely phenomenally done and they're photographic. And I think there is a place for that and I'm, and I'm never gonna put down on art per se, but for me and for what I like, I like seeing things that look hand done. I like to see the mistakes. I like to see, you know, I like to see a lot of the textures and and uh, thought processes that go into making uh, a drawing such as this, you know. <clears throat> you can still hear that I've not quite gotten over the horrible sickness that befalled me, befell. I had a, you know, a fever and, and everything that's associated with that and body chills and everything, you know, kind of like a flu. And then after the flu left, it's like, see ya. There is a cough that lingered and that cough has not quite gone away. I went to the doctor and of course, the doctor being doctors, they're, they're like, yeah, you had a virus. I'm like, no doy. <laughs> and I thought, you know, just, you know, give me something to help treat the symptoms of the cough. They're like, yeah, you can go and get a, a cough medicine from Walgreens and whatnot. And I'm like, oh, yay, something I could have done on my own. You want some more of my money? Um, and I just, you know, I, I kid. Doctors are fantastic. Without them, we'd all be, you know in a different place, I'm sure, in our society developmentally. Um, but, you know, modern medicine is one of those deals where, you know, they're very, or at least my doctor is, she's a, a firm believer in allowing your body to do a lot of the heavy lifting. She, you know, she doesn't want you to take ibuprofen if you have a fever, unless it's like 104. She doesn't want you to do certain things. She wants your body to do a lot of it. And that's smart. Um, but, you know, the cough has lingered. And she ended up giving me something for that. And it has not been easy. You know, we're going on three weeks of being under the weather. And it's really been a bummer. <laughs> so, saying that, I will try not to cough. <laughs> I will try not to cough. Okay, so. Now again, these aren't the global, quote unquote, global shadows that I'll be putting in here in just a second. And I'm gonna show you the difference in the global shadows. These are just what I would refer to as my first pass object shadows. where I would put like this crease right here. I know this is a form right here. I know that it goes like that, right? So that would be my lattice line. So I'm just gonna put in a little bit of shadowing here and there to help define that form a little bit better. Again, you know, putting it in there. Let's go ahead and turn taper on. Put some lines in here. And these aren't the specific 
color layer shadows. This is just a general shadow pass to help me. You know, we all need help. Some of us more than others. I'm one that needs help constantly. The drawing does come naturally, but I have worked at it my entire career to get better at it. So there are certain things that I know, certain shortcomings that I know about myself that I address as quickly as possible. And one of them happens to be boredom. I get bored very fast with drawings. You know, especially at this stage of the game when I start kind of meticulously putting in all of the shadow layers, all of the highlight layers, all of the texture layers. I'm a, I'm a kind of a concept sketch guy and I like, I like the sketch. That's where, you know, I've always loved to live in terms of, oh, that is the wrong color. The wrong color, the wrong color. Purple, there we go. I love sketching. It's just who I am, I love it. Whenever I used to go to Disney, uh, in back when it was called MGM Studios, um, I would go to their animation uh, studio because it was a working animation studio. And I love, I would actually go and pay the admission price and I would just go to the animation studio. I wouldn't ride any rides. <laughs> I mean, of course, maybe I rode one or two rides. You know, I'm not going to be dense about that. But I, that was not my main reason for being there. My main reason for being there was to go and watch the animators. I would go to the art section. I would go to the art of animation. And I would just look. Because that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a Disney animator. And I'm like... What's what's better than going to the actual studio where they made, you know, Lion King and <clears throat> Mulan and I don't think they made Brother Band there. Could be wrong, but uh, wonderful experience back in the day. And I always just loved the sketch. That was my deal. I love watching them draw. You know. And I was like, I'd like to do that someday, please. Thank you. Okay. We're just about wrapped up with this. What I'm going to do now, <clears throat> is I clear my throat for the 15,000th time and aggravate you in the process. My apologies, my apologies, my apologies. Okay. Alrighty. So I'm going to start putting in some generalized texture, make that brush a little bit bigger. There we go. Maybe his skin has a little bit more texture. I've turned the taper off, as you see, so I don't have that line. Okay. Go ahead and do this. Highlight on the side. And as you see, it actually goes pretty quick. When you start getting in here and start messing around, you know? So now I'm starting to get in a little bit of those global shadows. Global being global light. So maybe the light source is up in front of him because here's the highlight right there. So then what's going to happen, that highlight's really bright right there. You're going to have a nice dark shadow here. And then we're going to have highlights up here. So I'm going to go ahead and start putting in some of these shadows right here. You know, like I said before, this process could take a long time. Because I'm going through, and I'm not, as you see, I'm not staying in one area either. I am jumping around, and then I'm zooming out, and I'm seeing how it is coming along where I need to place stuff, where I need to put highlights, where I need to put shadows. I'm thinking about form. I'm thinking about all those elements, all those elements of design, all those principles of design, right? Form, line, shadow. 
at this stage of the game. Okay. Not too bad. Let me go ahead and color this in. Make it dark. And then there. There we go. Not too bad. Not too bad. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put you guys again on a time lapse. We're going to wrap up the shadows. I'll move from these simple texture shadows to um, global shadows. Global being, again, that major light source. I'm going to give you an example. So whenever I do my global shadows, you know, I think very simply. You know, so maybe I'll do something like this. Whoops. similar to what you saw at the beginning. And that'll be on a separate layer. So you'll see here in just a moment, whenever I start putting in these global, that global shadow layer to affect the entire object as a whole, not just these little crease parts. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's get a little bit in here. Good. Good. As it goes under here, it gets darker. And his eye kind of sticks out a little bit. And you can see how it suddenly becomes, right? You have it goes around like here, and it goes here, and here's his eye, and here's this, it goes around, and it goes down. So you can see all of these different planes that I'm thinking about whenever I'm drawing and shadowing shadowing, shading, this piece of art. Okay. Whoops. It is an ugly day today up in the mountains. It is chilly. And also, it looks like it's going to rain again. I can't stand the rain, guys. I can't stand it. That's one of the things whenever I moved up here. Whenever we first moved up here, it was absolutely gorgeous. Humidity was low. We were coming from Florida. And we were like, oh, it's amazing. You know, you, tr you, you visit up here, and then you think you want to move here, <clears throat> which, you know, is a mistake. You don't want to move somewhere unless you, you know, first have been there a lot. You know the ecosystem. You know, the, you know the, how the people treat you and whatnot. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is, the weather kind of turned on us, and it got cold and rainy and wet, and then we would have, you know, two, three weeks of gray without sun, and I do not like that. I am a sunshine magnet. I love sun. Love being outside, which is funny because I'm an artist. Um, I love being outside. I love just, uh, I love it. It's one of the reasons why we bought, <coughs> excuse me, we bought a Jeep. Because I love, you know, taking the doors off. I love taking the top off. And I just love being outside. So it has definitely been a challenge living in this place. Because it is not sunshiny all the time. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, I talked about putting you on time lapse. And I sit there and yab on. So let's put you on time lapse. And um, I'll come back in when I start doing the highlights.
details are in, what I'm going to do now is just some simple details in the background here. You know, putting a couple of little things to kind of break up that shape in the background to give it a little bit of dynamic presence. I don't want it to be a detractor, so like, like that right there. Yeah, I want that silhouette to come through just a little bit more. Yeah, that's working decent. Okay. Sometimes just a little bit of experimentation will net you the desired look that you are trying to get. Sometimes it will not be the desired look, you know? Okay, so in this stage of the game, what I'm going to do is probably start working on the highlights. I'm going to go ahead and put these into these. Let's go ahead and sample. Sample these really quick. Let's go over here. Yeah, that's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> A little bit lighter here. You notice I've, I've, I've changed my brush here just in the, in the, in the intermediary while I decide if I'm going to go ahead and place what kind of a texture I'm going to place on top of everything. So I'm going to add a layer on top of that layer mask, that shadow layer mask right there. I'm going to go ahead and create that layer mask again. It is referencing layer 17, which I do have on Multiply, so you can't see layer 17, but you can see the layers that are on top of layer 17, which is pretty snazzy. So let's go over here to Overlay. <clears throat> and since I like the textures that I have here, I'm not gonna go back in with the textures. I'm just gonna sample what's there, and I'm going to a little bit warmer. Let's go a little bit warmer. Maybe a yellow. We're at 97% opacity. I'm going to turn that off. I want to keep that blue hue. So let's go back. A little bit lighter. What I don't like. Normal. Let's go all the way up here. Okay, instead of overlay, we're going to go to linear dodge. Something is awry. I should be seeing a lot more. Let's go on top of everything. Add a layer. Let's do linear dodge. Okay, so that's what I'm seeing. It's affecting this layer, and linear dodge on the multiply layer doesn't really do a lot. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that layer. And I'm going to go on top because I'm going to affect the skin. So let's go ahead and add that layer. Create a layer mask. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to sample that color. Let's bring this up a little bit. Okay, so. What that's going to do is it's going to pull some of those highlights that I want to bring out a little bit more.
And it's only going to affect his skin layer currently. I don't have it to where it's going to affect anything other than that blue hue of his skin. I'm actually going to do something here in just a second. Push that color a little bit more. Let's make it a little bit bigger here. That muscle right there. Top of that kneecap. Not going too out of control with it. A lot of times less is more. I just don't want to smack people that said that. Less is not more, you moron. More is more. If you want more, you do more. But what I'm trying to say is basically you don't want to overdo it, right? You don't want to overwork a piece of artwork to where it just, you know, screams attention. Do just what you need to. Let's go ahead and zoom out just a little bit. Okay, let's go to the armor. There's the armor right there. We'll add a layer. We'll press uh, option. <clears throat> and that creates a layer mask. So let's go ahead and select. We're going to warm this up slightly. And we're going to go. Okay. That actually might be a wee bit too strong. Actually, I'm thinking it is. Okay. Yeah, so let's go to overlay. Overlay again. I'm gonna warm this up a little bit. And since I've got a layer mask, I'm sorry, a clipping mask on the brown only. <clears throat> Here we go. We'll bring it up a little bit. Okay. A little bit bigger. So it's only affecting that brown part of his armor. Too bad. Not too bad. Not too shabby. Good. Warm it up just a little bit here and there. Okay, since it is overlay, I'm going to change the color here just slightly to get some reflective shadows. And I am going to sample this green down here, but I am going to lighten it up slightly. I'm going to go in and I'm going to put it underneath to kind of have some of those cast shadows that are coming up from the bottom so the light hits the grass. Okay. So I'm going to come back, have a little bit of a color variation on that brown, just slightly, to mix it up just a little bit. And then I'm going to go back, I'm going to lock the transparency on that brown. Okay, let's go back. <laughs> Dirty that 
just slightly. Make it a little dirty here and there. All right. So let's go down to the splats. Foliage. Dry media. <clears throat> Like the rubble brush. So let's go ahead and we're going to turn the opacity on. We're going to jack that back slightly. Too much. So give it some, a little bit of texture in there. Right. And that helps sell it. Yeah, that's much nicer. Down here, that helps sell it a little bit better. It's little details like that, you know, that help tell the story of who he is a little bit better. Come back, do a little more right here. There. Now we come back here. Now that's overlay, so now we're going to. <clears throat> We're going to do linear dodge, and we're going to jack that to like a yellowish color. And nope, not feeling that. So let's go back. <laughs> Soft shade. No. Yeah, that's going back to the brush that I started with a little bit. Give it a little bit of texture. Now again, we're on that separate layer. And I'm putting it in and I can adjust the opacity after the fact so that's what I'm going to do here I'm just going to put in a couple little indications a couple little things here and there again to give it that texture to help it pop a little bit Good. So let's go here. Let's turn that taper on. Get some grain here in that wood. And there, good. Instances, maybe there's a crack here and there. Okay, and just for giggles, I always like to give a little bit of an indication of that eye right here. I'm going to turn that off. Okay, a little bit more. Okay, <clears throat> and I can do this all over the place, you know. Kind of nice. Highlight right here. Turn the reflective light right there. Turn a little bit brighter. OK. 
Okay. Save. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pl start playing with the highlights and reflective light. And you're going to watch. I'm going to put you on time lapse. And then I'll do a final wrap up here at the end. <clears throat> I'm just going to start going in and I'm going to jump all over the place. Let's go ahead and do a layer mask. I like doing layer masks just because I can control. Like right now. So I'm going to go color and the opposite. Let me see the opposite pink would kind of be like a greenish color. We're going to go darker. We're going to bring that up. Actually, we're going to go multiply. We're going to choke that back a little bit. And see, I can sit there and do this all day, and it's not going to go outside the lines. And if I need to adjust things, I still <coughs> have preserved the underlying layer. Which is pretty cool. Right? And again, I can add another layer. I'll go ahead and sample that. We're going to go lighter and we're going to go a little bit redder, purplish pink. And then we're going to go overlay. Uh, let's do color dodge. Nope. Linear. Nope. Okay. <laughs> and here, watch, I'll show you something. If I'm satisfied with what I see and the layer effects that I see, which I do, I like it, I can go ahead and select all three of these. And how I did that is I have that top layer, I hit the shift button, I go down to layer 12 and it selects everything in between, and then I just go command E, and now that's all on one layer. Okay, so... <clears throat> What I'm going to do is, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and on time lapse, and we're going to do a final uh, overlay with, with, um, with some highlights and with some colors, and maybe uh, a partial gradient map. I'll show you know how I do that. If I decide to put a gradient map, I do want to show you how I decide to do that. But like right at this stage where I'm at, what I'll typically do is once I put all the highlights in and stuff around. I'll go back with my shadow layer. I'll put a shadow multiply layer on top of everything. And I'll just block in you know, different shadows that I want uh, here and there to kind of push and pull. <laughs> like here, I'll give you an example. So all the way up here, I'll do uh, a multiply layer. So let's choose a cool purple hue. And like what I can do is I can come back. This is just a simple, uh, you know, uh, a simple shade brush so that I can just basically come in. Now, I don't have it locked on a transparency, so you can see that that can cause an issue, but I don't typically, you know, really have any issues when it comes to that because um, I don't really get next to the edge, right? If it gets to next to the edge, I can always come down here. I can select that. That way it stays in. And all I did was hit my uh, command button and I hovered over that multiply layer to select the shape and then you know now I can go in and I can just start putting in my shadow my final shadow layer right that global shadow that we talked about earlier and I can get a little bit broad with it I can go really big and if I want this hand a little bit more I can darken the hand can see how that pushes that back and it pushes that back and I can go ahead and push that back a little bit. That final global shadow really helps bring things together for me. You know, and if I'm like, I put a little bit too much in there, I can always click the eraser and I can go back and I can get rid of it. Again, digital illustration is one of those mediums that really is tailor-made for business professionals, you know. I don't think I could do any of this if I was in a traditional environment. 
it would have to do masking, it would take lots of time, whereas it takes, you know, just a couple seconds to do this. And I've got it on its own little special layer. You know, push those shadows a little bit more, maybe a little cast shadow here and there. It pushes things back. You know, maybe I want this in the background a little bit more. And I'll show you here in just a second. So these aren't tricks. These are just, you know, in the process of creating the illustration. This is my methodology that I utilize whenever I do one. See, and even that little bit helps push him a little bit more. If I need to push it back a little bit, I'll do that. All right, so time to do the highlights. too much more time on this piece <clears throat> um so as kind of a final little push what I might do is I might put on a color layer and start messing around a little bit with the different color hues in the overall environment what I mean by that is maybe I'll take a red hue and I'll put it down below to kind of contrast with the green and then maybe some of the shadows underneath here, I wanna change their hue a little bit, maybe to a little bit more of a purple hue down here. So basically what I'm doing is I'm changing the environmental lighting, right? Okay, and up here, maybe I wanna warm this up a little bit. Up here. I don't wanna get rid of the color. I just wanna give it a little kiss, just a little kiss. Okay, so that's pretty much it, what I wanted to show you guys, just that process of illustration, creating a fun piece of artwork that, you know, you could post on Instagram, social media, or make it part of a larger body of work, which is what I'm doing. Let me turn this green just slightly. 
Yeah. Lots of fun. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know it's been a while. I've been really sick, so hopefully um, we'll get rid of this cough and we'll be back in the saddle again. Back making videos for you guys. Almost reaching that 10,000 mark. I'm so excited. I'm gonna try and do something really fun. Here, let's one last thing. A little bit bluer right here. Yeah. Anyway, thank you guys. Like and subscribe if you like what you see. And please, as always, go out and create something to benefit the world. You know? Whatever it is. Make a video, make a fun picture, make a drawing. But definitely enjoy what you do. Thank you guys, and we'll see you next time. Sound effects, sound effects, sound effects. Thank you, guys. See you next time. Bye.